If you think your children are possessed, don't plot their unaliving. Don't duct tape their eyes and their mouths shut to protect them from the demons. Don't do that. Don't be like these people. Whisper in the night dark Footsteps in the backyard Shadows dance on stained walls The dust every night falls Fear grips like chains tied What up home slices, what up home fries, and what up homes of other varieties. If you've been here before, welcome back. If you are new, hello, I'm Emily the Fine Art Medium. I am a psychic medium who specializes in the paranormal and has a degree in social deviance. And today we are going to be discussing the case of Deborah and Adolfo Gomez. And if I keep saying Adolfo wrong and I say Adolfo, I am sorry, my... Mouth doesn't want to work with my brain. But essentially, yeah, this is a case where a couple from Illinois who was arrested for duct taping their children inside an SUV in a Walmart parking lot. And uh, they did so allegedly because they claimed that their children were demon possessed. And we're going to talk about it. Now I'm going to briefly run through like their case here. So according to this news report on WQAD.com, a police officer testified in court that the couple's 12-year-old daughter said her two youngest siblings, ages 7 and 5, were occasionally tied up with their faces and eyes covered with duct tape to keep the demons out. Adolfo Gomez, 52, and Deborah M. Gomez, 43, were arrested June 13th in a Walmart parking lot. After a customer saw two children bound with tape, the couple was charged with two counts of child abuse and five counts of child endangerment. During Tuesday's preliminary hearing, <laughs> remember how I said my mouth and my brain don't sync up sometimes? Well, that's a great example. The court learned the couple had sold most of their possessions and left their suburban Chicago home because a darkness was coming over the house and the house was possessed by demons. Police said the family left Illinois and were headed to Arizona where their oldest son attended college. On their way to Arizona, the Gomez family broke down in Lawrence and were temporarily living in their SUV in the Walmart parking lot. At the time of their arrest, police said they were forced to tase Adolfo Gomez three times. His wife, Deborah Gomez, was found shopping inside Walmart. Inside her cart, police found a baseball bat, two rolls of duct tape, and two tarps. Oh no, that's not good. During the police interview, officers asked Adolfo if he was under the influence of drugs or alcohol. Adolfo, according to police, said he had not used acid in over 30 days and said he had not had any alcohol because his wife threatened to leave him if he did. He also told police he hadn't slept for nine days. Oh boy. During the preliminary hearing, the court also learned the couple was regular listeners of Steve Quayle. Quayle, I'm sorry if I said this wrong, but I don't know how to pronounce it. It's spelled Q-U-A-Y-L-E, Quayle, Quayle, I don't know, a conspiracy theorist who, according to his website, believes the world is coming to an end. In the introduction to his 2003 book, Genetic Armageddon, Today's Technology, Tomorrow's Monsters, Quayle says, it is safe to say that most of those reading this book will live to see this terrifying future and may know the sorrow of seeing loved ones herded into death camps, and of seeing mankind ground into power under the metal and clawed feet of immoral supermen. The future will make the mass genocides of the 20th century pale by comparison. 
The foundation for fulfilling this nightmare may already be in place, and as will be detailed in this book, fully entrenched in government and business. There is no if to whether or not these things will be put into motion. They are already unfolding and will continue to fruition if not stopped immediately. The Gomez's youngest children, ages 15, 13, 12, 7, and 5, are now in protective custody. They will be back in court on Thursday, August 16th. So this was back in 2012. One of the children did say that recently, like right before that they were arrested in that Walmart parking lot, that their parents had been watching a show about demons and fallen angels and that kind of like sparked their recent actions however you know if we're having reports from the landlord of padlocks on the bedroom doors um yeah that's a cop out i'm sorry there were things going on even before then and then i found this on jimfishertruecrime.blogspot.com and I'll put the links down below for the resources, of course. So, this is kind of like a detailed summary of what had been going on with Adolfo Gomez. So in 1994, in January, so Gomez walked out of prison in Illinois after serving three years of burglary and theft Four years later, he was living in a suburban Chicago community of Naperville with his 29-year-old wife, Deborah, and their two sons, ages 1 and 2, October 1998. Deborah pleaded guilty to child neglect after leaving the boys alone in their apartment for eight hours. 2007, the couple now with four children, ages 2 to 11, were living in Lumberd, Illinois. That November, Adolfo pleaded guilty to a drunk driving charge. And then we have from 2008 to 2010, the Gomez family now comprised of five children moved from one apartment to another around DuPage and Cook Counties, Illinois. Their landlord in Wooddale, from whom they rented a basement apartment, noticed that Adolfo had installed padlocks on the doors to his children's bedroom. The oldest Gomez child told the landlord he did all the cooking and that the family acquired its food from local churches. While living in North Lake, another suburb in Chicago community, the Illinois Department of Family Services in November 11th opened a child neglect case on Adolfo and Deborah. Following the investigation, the agency in April 2012, they closed the case without taking action against the parents two months earlier. Adolfo spent 12 days in the DuPage County Jail for failure to pay several fines and comply with various court orders. June 10, 2012, the Gomez family, while on a road trip to Arizona to visit relatives, had a car trouble in Lawrence. And this is where now we are caught up in 2012, where they are arrested for duct taping their children in their SUV. And, guys, this is bananas because... There's just so much history between them and law enforcement and doing things that they shouldn't be doing. And then you have child endangerment, child neglect. Whether or not your kid is possessed, and I'm not saying that they were, but I'm saying even if they were, you don't duct tape them and then put them in a padlock room. There's a way to go about it in a safe way safe manner and that is not it so looking back at the interview that Adolfo although I cannot say his name to save my life but Mr. Gomez uh he admitted that he hadn't done acid in 30 days and that he hadn't been doing alcohol because his wife threatened to leave him. So if we're at the point where the wife is threatening to leave him, that tells me, that tells us that perhaps that allegedly alcohol may have been a problem at some point. And obviously he had been doing acid either intermittently or up until 30 days 
before uh, this happened. And guys, okay, while I've never done acid, okay, I do know from research that you can have some negative side effects if you use acid. You have the potential of suffering psychosis. And uh, when you're in psychosis, you can hallucinate. You can fall under delusions and all those kinds of things. But here's the dealio. I don't feel like, in my psychic opinion, in my educational opinion, and just my other regular opinion, I don't think those kids were possessed whatsoever. What I will say is both the parents had a negative attachment. And if you've watched my content before, I've talked about what can happen if you are under the influence of drugs or alcohol while having an attachment. And it can push you to do some negative things, especially because when you are under the influence of anything, really, it lowers your inhibitions, it lowers your psychic defenses, it puts you in an overall not so great state for negative things to come in and attach and influence, and essentially, that is what happened. Now, in order for someone to abuse their child, you have to look back at the person doing the abusing and find out why. What is causing them to do that? Is it just because they believe that their child is possessed? Or are they using that as like an excuse? Maybe they were abused themselves. Typically those that abuse their children have been victims of abuse themselves. And it kind of just continues a cycle. And I feel like that is another thing going on there. And to because they were so impressionable and so easily manipulated, not only just through their influence, but also through the manipulation of the types of media that they were consuming. So if they were looking at a conspiracy theorist that, I don't know, taught doomsday or whatever, you're more inclined to believe that when you're under the influence of substances. Now, as for the wife, we don't know if she's ever done any drugs. We don't have that information. But something tells me one or both of them are pretty religious. And I think that if you take that into consideration and then you add in fear because it's obvious that they're afraid of these negative forces, it's easier to react in the way that they have with child abuse. But if that person didn't report what they saw at that Walmart parking lot, there would be two bodies. They would have murdered their children. And I am fully confident, I'm sure everyone else, like reading the articles is confident, the police were confident, that's why their children were confiscated. I hope they still don't have those children. While um, being in the foster care system sucks and there's a crap ton of problems in of itself in that situation, at the end of the day, they are better there than ending up dead in some ditch wrapped up in some tarp. Um, it's screwed up that it took Child Protective Services that long to get them and take their kids away because I'm telling you it would not have ended very well and that's the thing you got to watch what you're consuming online you got to watch what your children are consuming online but for them if you mix somebody that's religious and you mix it with fear and you mix it with substance abuse and even without substance abuse it can get dangerous um, if you are impressionable enough to just believe anything that seems like it makes sense, um, maybe you need to reevaluate yourself. Maybe you need to question things more. Don't believe everything you see or hear or read online. 
Don't believe everything you see on the news. Um, yeah. Anyone can write a book, okay? With, with Kindle publishing and self-publishing, anyone can write a book. You don't have to have special certifications or education to write a book. And a lot of times people feel like if, oh, if there's a book, that means they have some type of credibility. Not necessarily. Not necessarily. So you always got to be careful the information that you're reading, consuming, what have you. But I feel like in Deborah's case, if she was not using drugs or alcohol or whatever, it was more of a fear response. And then for Mr. Gomez, it was fear, substance abuse, and religion, and the wife kind of like going along with her. Yeah, it's not good. Not good. Now, on the off chance that you actually believe your children or child is possessed, like I said, don't tie them up. Don't lock them in a room. Consult a professional. Consult a medium. Consult a therapist. Consult both. Um, always consult a doctor first. If your child is acting strange, out of pocket, out of the ordinary, first consult a doctor. That is the first step. Second step, if the doctors clear them and they say that there's nothing wrong with the kid, go to a psychiatrist or psychologist. Make sure their mental health is a-okay. If that checks out to be fine, then you go to a medium and have them see what the heck is going on if they're being influenced. And if that is also true and they are being, if it is true that they are being influenced or have an attachment or there's a haunting in your space, the medium, whether it's me or you go somewhere else, it doesn't have to be me. Whatever floats your boat, whatever, you know, works for you, great. Check with the medium and they'll give you um, advice on what to do. A lot of times there will be cleansings that must be done inside the home and then of the person. It's typical that you do a house cleansing first, but I always recommend if it is affecting the child, it means it's an attachment and the child individually has to be checked out and cleansed. And Reiki is a great source to do that. You can also, depending on your religion, if you are Christian or Catholic, you can get a deliverance if you are Christian and then an exorcism if you are Catholic. However, there are people that don't fall within a specific religious organization that'll help cleanse your child. There are shamans. There are people that do exorcisms outside of religion in their own unique way that are just as good. And yeah, always find someone that is willing to work with you and that doesn't force a religion on you. That's always great. If you're somebody that doesn't have a preferred religion, maybe you might want to see, do some research, see what fits best with you. You always want to look for a source that is greater than yourself to help you. Um, so like, let's say you believe there is a God, but you don't believe in the Christian God or whatever. Again, do the research, find what best suits your beliefs. Um, I didn't get to where I am without research. I researched the crap out of everything. Like, just don't give into that fear. Don't give into religion and their propaganda, okay? Because sometimes religion will manipulate you for the control and for monetary gain. I'm not going to point fingers at which one or which ones, but y'all can read the lines in between the lines. So, yeah. 
With certain platforms becoming more popular, such as TikTok and Instagram Reels, you're starting to find more doomsday cults or doomsday conspiracy theorists. And guys, let me tell you, if something as screwed up as doomsday, if it was going to occur, my guides would tell me. They warned me about COVID. They warned me about volcanoes. They warned me about tsunamis. Trust me, they would tell me. And as far as I know, there's gonna be no end of the world, okay? So everyone can calm down. I know the state of the world, and even mostly the United States, is a little foobar. If you don't know what foobar is, look it up. <laughs> it's a little it's a little screwed up, okay? And so it might appear like things might go really wrong, but it's not going to be like nuclear war we're not gonna have that as far as i know usually i'll have like a six month to a year warning <laughs> if anything like that were to happen but as far as i know we are not going to have any doomsday i feel like in terms of civil unrest you might have that a little bit here and there in the united states um, I mean, there's civil unrest all over the world, but to the point of doomsday, no. So those watching, if, if that's ever in the back of your mind, just ask me, please. <laughs> um, but no, we're fine for now. We're fine. But um, guys, it's okay. It's okay to be prepared. So like those who have their go bags and all that stuff in case of an emergency. That's fine. I have my own. We get earthquakes here in Pennsylvania from time to time. They're pretty rare. But if I were you and you live in the United States, have a go bag because you never know. You could be, I don't know, it could flood or there could be a tornado or there could be some weather emergency and you're going to you're going to need emergency supplies. So it's always good no matter where you live to have your emergency supplies. Okay? Okay. But people are worried about nuclear war. I'm not I'm not cuz if you think about it, who's going to benefit? Sure, one one country and we can use this for an example, guys. This is an example. But let's say Iraq or Russia even wanted to say, F you, we're going to nuke you. And by you, I mean the United States. Well, maybe temporarily that might be fine and dandy, but you got to think about it in a global scale. Where do people get most of their food? You get it from the United States, depending on what it is. You get it from Mexico. You get it from... Russia. Um, they're not going to take away, they're not going to screw up their chances in getting food resources, not to mention the amount of supplies in terms of like goods. It will f mess up their economy and it's a money thing too. So it's not even just food, but it's a money problem. So they're not going to nuke us. And, uh, yeah. So, guys, again, if you're worried about that, don't be. Guys, I'm gonna end it here because there's not much going on with this case. I mean, it's obvious that the parents have their own attachment and it's making them believe things that they probably normally wouldn't believe outside of if they were under the influence or under fear manipulation. So yeah, guys, thank you guys so much for watching. And if you have any questions, comments, concerns, leave them down below and I will see you tomorrow. <laughs> Peace.